Hey, 10 over 10 continues here on Citizen TV. Thanks for staying with us. Time for our discussion of the week. And I really think that this is one that you are going to enjoy. We're going to be talking a little bit about the world of fitness in Kenya, how the industry has grown and how it is that one goes on to become not just a fitness expert, but also a personal trainer. And we've got two, <laughs> two very able uh, personal trainers here to talk to us about uh, their journey into how they got into fitness. So we'll start with introductions, starting with the beautiful lady. My name is Evelyn Owala of Vival Health and Fitness, um, and I'm a personal trainer, and also the owner of Vival Health and Fitness. Welcome. Next. Yeah, my name is Steven Adika, a bodybuilder and also a full-time personal trainer. I'm the one who runs 254 Celebrities Trainer. Welcome. Well, like I said, this is not something that happens overnight where you wake up with muscles like yours. So I want to hear a little bit about your journey. How long ago you got into fitness? What motivated you to get uh, into this world? Um, well, uh, for most ladies, even for you who are here, you want to get in shape and you don't know how to. You try running, you try doing those hundred sit-ups and you can't just get the body you're looking for. And that is what drove me. And um, I also thank God so much for my husband because he directed me. He had been doing this for a while. He told me like, if you lift weights and do this, you're gonna get what you want. I took my time to study it and understand what my body needs. Different bodies, different, you need different things to get yourself in shape. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Where, where did your for me, journey begin? I have a very different story. The reason why I introduced myself into bodybuilding and also training weights is because in the hood where I used to stay, it was survival for the fittest. If you are weak, you won't get anything there. You're going to be beaten up thoroughly. So I had to keep on working so hard so that I protect myself <laughs> from those crazy stuff. And then it ended, I ended up finding myself now into bodybuilding and finally decided to make money out of it uh, into personal training. Okay, because that is a thing that you guys have turned what you do and what you have a passion for into a business. Uh, so how did that decision come about from just being passionate about fitness and eating right and going to the gym and saying, you know what, there's money that I can make here? Well, um, before I was a banker oh. um, and I was um, an assistant manager in a bank, but I decided to quit my job to do my passion which was a bit tricky because uh, first of all, I didn't have clients with me when I was quitting. All I had was a hobby. So I needed to turn this hobby into money. If you have a, a hobby, it can probably make you money. You might be sitting on some millions down there. So um, I decided to try. My first client, of course, um, I wanted to train her for free. I just wanted to show the world that I can do this. Uh, so I told her I'm ready to train you for free. She was not willing to be trained for free, so she asked me, like, I need to quote something. Well, I did my calculations for my fuel consumption, and that's all I charged her. So I charged her 12K, that's all I needed for the month. But when she gave me the transformation, I got several referral, referrals, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about you? How did the business aspect yeah. of it start? For me, I used to be employed for so many long time and then it reaches a time whereby I was getting tired of being controlled and not being a boss of my own. Working longer shifts, it was a bit tiresome. So I decided that whether I have many clients or I don't have any, I have to start my own business and be a boss of my own. It wasn't easy, but what I can tell you is this. You have to make tough decisions for you to progress in life. Right now, I'm happy because I'm training very many people here. Some of them are in, in movie industries, musicians, radio presenters, TV presenters. I'm so happy because it's, it wasn't easy, but you have to put some effort. I started as a bodybuilder. Then it reached a time whereby I noticed bodybuilding alone, it can't help me. I have to make more money. And that's why I decided like it has to be personal training. Mm -hmm. What does it take to become certified as a, as a personal trainer? Because it's a big responsibility. People are trusting you with their bodies and <laughs> their lives, really, their health. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure you have to know something about nutrition and, and just the whole realm of it. So what does it take to get to that level of I'm a personal trainer now? 
apart from doing the education itself it takes a lot of um, getting to know and understand the body because there's a lot of theory when you when it comes to classwork but when now it comes to execution you realize it's a bit challenging because how her body reacts is not how my body is going to react and it's not because there are many other factors to consider so when the most important thing for me is that as somebody tries uh, whatever it is that will work for a particular body you have to take care of the precautions that go with it right and uh, also you need to know i think the most important thing is to know fasting first aid i think it's very basic and you must know it because otherwise uh, this is somebody who is going to work out sometimes they can pass out on a machine sometimes they, anything can happen and you have to be able to save that person's life so i believe that is very very important on in terms of uh, knowing what to do you have to learn the body apart from the knowledge that you've gathered through school you have to know the body yeah yeah and you have to listen to the client all the time you have to listen to the person you're dealing with so that you're able to understand do you ever deal with a client where the weight is not coming off it's, it's just not working yeah. they're doing everything that you're telling them to seemingly but it's just maybe yeah. the two of you are just not meshing i mean what what happens then well what can happen actually is that this client can be having other hormonal issues mm -hmm. or the client might be eating cookies in bed right what we call <laughs> you train so hard he, he she says she does everything but when the craving strikes they go for the cookie jar yeah so that kind of a client at the end of the day they have to be able to confess you have to bring your client to a point of, of comfort where they can confess to you that well yesterday I ate 10 cookies, but I had to eat them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then you will understand how to address and it. On top of that, mm -hmm. I always tell other personal trainers, try not to make your client to be that it all, it's, it's never all about weight loss. Yeah? You have to make sure that they live a healthy lifestyle. Because I always tell some clients, you know, it, it never took you like three or six months to add that weight. You have been eating so poorly. You know what, what you are eating, drinking very funny stuff for almost five years. Then you come to the gym. You want it to take you like three months. You start complaining like, I'm not losing this. I'm not gaining this. It is never that easy. But if you can take it like you want to live a healthy lifestyle, that is the best that you can do to yourself. Don't, put your, don't give your pressures. Don't pressurize yourself so much like I've been training so hard and I'm not losing. It's never all about losing. It's all about being fit. Yeah. And anyway, some people want to gain actually. Oh. Yeah, there are or people like muscle who muscle and Yes, there are people who want to gain, gain a figure, gain, you know, at least they find themselves too skinny and they don't like it that way. They are also that class of They're people. They're looking for curves as well. Yes. So I'm curious to hear what your day-to-day -day life is like. <laughs> I know you guys are very busy. Uh, you were telling me you can have up to how many clients in one day? Mm, 20 up to 20 clients yeah which means i have to wake up ideally you would think that when you're self-employed you won't wake up but you will wake up in the middle of the night so i'll wake up very early let's say by three then i have to sort out a few things here and there and leave for my first clients and my day will will run on laps one after the other right and um if you're late um i'm sorry we'll just finish up whatever time you you your slot is because i have to work with time and uh, um during the day it, i have to find time also to work out because my body is my build billboard so if i don't work it out then uh, i mean i won't have anything at the end of the day so i have to create that so time how long also. do you give yourself to work out personally it can be training. it depends from day to day if i'm able to afford an hour i'll use that hour wisely mm -hmm. if i'm not able to afford uh, an hour i'll use whatever time i have wisely uh -huh. sometimes i have to 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 train with the client to try and motivate them but it also keeps my body active right in that way yeah how many meals do you eat in a day on an easy day i try and do maybe eight Eight minutes in a day. <laughs> I thought it would be something like that. <laughs> but he has to. <laughs> but these are healthy meals, right? To give you energy. 
these are healthy meals to give you energy to train as much as you need to train right the meals that you're eating these are healthy meals that are giving you energy to do what you need to do throughout the day yeah the healthy meals so for me there are a few things that are put into consideration my carbohydrate intake during the morning hours because i work out a lot i also work a lot because waking up every day at four going back at at home at 11 p.m it's never that easy so the only thing that can keep you moving is you have to keep on eating and eating and eating <laughs> not like he's eating cookies <laughs> yeah but it has to be you're, you're, for me I'm, I'm also a bodybuilder so my meals are divided into two mm -hmm. when i'm preparing for a competition and when i'm just having fun mm -hmm. when i don't watch what i eat yeah but at the end of the day i also have to calculate the amount of calories that i have to consume in a day yeah. yeah and we talked about what you guys do being a serious business and if you're seeing 15 20 clients in a day uh you know there might be one, someone watching thinking well how much does that cost <laughs> for me to stay fit i'm sure it costs a lot for you guys to uh you know buy the foods that you need to eat and, and buy the gear and everything like that but for someone if i wanted to be trained by you how much would you charge me per session well it depends Honestly, most of the time I guide clients towards taking packages that are, are, are uh, let's say, monthly or whatever, that will give them advantage. If you take one session, I'll charge you 2,500 per session. But if you take, if you take like a block of a month, the charge will be different, mm -hmm. yeah? Depending on the number of sessions you're taking. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's cheaper to take like the block sessions, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what you're trying to build is, a, is an ongoing relationship, not just a one-off when I've eaten too much and I can't yeah. see you. You know, you know what happens is I can't give you uh, transformation over one session. And the problem is, again, if you do that, this person is going to go out there and say, oh, so-and-so is a good trainer. But remember, nobody will see the change in your body. So you will be demarketing me without knowing if there's any word like that. Right. Without knowing. So you you will be telling everybody like, oh, I'm being trained by so-and-so. But that so-and-so ideally sees you once a week or twice a week. Mm. It doesn't make the difference really right, right. yeah so you don't see the transformation yeah. i'm gonna take final comments from uh, each of you you can also share your contact information uh and just for anyone watching who has ambitions to become a fitness trainer maybe you can give them a little bit of advice yeah what i want to tell all people who want to who start personal training business it's simple number one you must be passionate with what you're doing for the moment you put focus on making changing people's life money will just follow you you won't struggle it's easy put put other people's life into consideration make sure that they change and live a very healthy life then the rest will just follow another thing which is very very important guys out here young men young ladies young, young guys you just you have to put few things into consideration nowadays you know we do so many things we drink we do all these crazy stuffs but remember one thing your parents are putting a lot of money to educate you people. It reaches a time whereby you are so much educated, but you are dying with a very poor health. So you have to think about that. For me, you can follow me at 254 Celebrities Trainer on Instagram and Steve Adika or 254 Celebrity Trainer on Facebook. All right, thank you. <laughs> Okay, what I can encourage the young people is that um, right now is a period where we realize that you can, I know most of you may think that, well, I know I'm young at heart, but <laughs> the truth is when you work out, it keeps you, your age a shadow, right? So you're, you're able to look younger, stay healthier for longer. And again, uh, always try even if you have to do it at home just try try whatever you're doing whatever little you are doing just start there because you want to look good you want to rock those dresses you want to rock those you know when you put on the t-shirts you want you know your chest is out there right <laughs> so please just put on a, a little effort towards it uh, if you don't like the health part of it just put it for looking good and then again, if you're a personal trainer out there and you want to start the personal training business, it is very important to know the principles apart from the education itself. And also, just start, even if it's, you're starting small. Someday it will grow. And just be encouraged that 
not all of us started with 10 clients. We started somewhere. The first month I didn't even have a client. The second month I had one client. And I had to convince that client and I was ready to train the client for free. Have the passion for it, see the body curve, and you will be excited of what will follow. All right, thank you so much. I think uh, I'm not even we like had a, you can, you can follow yes. me on Instagram, Eval, E-V-E-A-L, Health and Fitness, or on Facebook, Eval Health and Fitness, or Evelyn Okini Owala on Facebook. All right, we had a request for you guys to do a little flexing. Show us what you got before I before I let you leave. So look at Steve laughing. So if you guys don't mind standing up and you know flex for us a little bit, right? Cindyo, it's one of our muscles. <laughs> All right, how about you stand? How about you stand? Let's stand. <laughs> so much for being here we've learned a lot you've encouraged us and hopefully even if we don't become personal trainers you've encouraged us to stay fit so thank you both for being here 10 over 10 continues next stay tuned <laughs> all right